It's been six months since the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 17 people were killed that day. But out of that tragedy came a group of students dedicated to preventing future school shootings. Two of those students, David and Lauren Hogg, described their experience in a new book, Hashtag Never Again, A New Generation Draws the Line. Hari Srinivasan recently spoke with them about their movement, and he began with the days immediately following the tragedy. I know for me, I never thought I was going to go any through anything like this. But those first couple of days, you would think it would be so painful, and it was. But if anything, it was more my whole community was numb. We were numb. We didn't feel anything. And that's almost worse than feeling something, because being numb is awful. I think it's worse than actually hurting because you're just so in shock that you don't know why you aren't feeling grief yet. And that was the worst part of grieving so far. Hey, David, you said one of the reasons that of your response was your inability to help her. Yeah, to have somebody so close to you like my sister is to me and hear them cry that much to the point that they can't even speak for days on end and I can't do anything about it other than just try to prevent other people from having to live through the same experience and cry the same tears and go through the same suffering. I, I couldn't just stand around and do nothing. I felt that I had to speak up for those that couldn't at the time. The people on, that you see on TV, they aren't characters, they aren't numbers, they're, they're people, they're friends, they're daughters, they're sons, they're parents. And their suffering is the same suffering that you can go through if we don't take action to end this. Your advocacy has also made you and your entire family targets. Um, you've been called tons of names on the internet, um, a, you know, crisis actor, a part of a false flag operation, uh, you know, coached by liberals, etc. You've, you've managed to laugh some of it off. You've targeted advertisers from very influential critics. Um, what's worked best to get you through this? Laughing it off, really, and being around my family and friends and having their support, knowing that what I'm doing is not trying to take people's guns because I, I wouldn't want to do that. On a personal level, I, I wouldn't like somebody that's trying to do that because I believe in the Second Amendment. I just believe in common sense regulation. For example, you, you, you used to be able to smoke anywhere in public. However, the people can still smoke. They can go out and drink if they're not going to drive. You know, it, there are ways to approach this where people's guns aren't taken away and lives are saved. It's really common sense. You know, David, one of the things that you mention in the book is that there is a, a certain you know, part of this reason that people are paying attention to this is that you are you know, white middle class kids in Florida, that this has happened before to lots of people and it's continuing to happen, right? Um, and, and you point out that in the book that there's a disproportionate impact on, that gun violence has on poorer communities. Absolutely. I've now been to the South Side of Chicago and Ferguson, Missouri, and the one thing that amazed me most in both places was the strength and resilience and just honest love and compassion these people have for each other and their community, and it's so saddening to see the amount of suffering that they've had to go through. Since the beginning of this school year on the South Side of Chicago, over 150 kids, kids just like you were or I was or my sister is, killed under the age of 21, and their voices aren't heard. In the media and in law enforcement, if you live on a block where there are gangs, even if you aren't part of that gang and you get shot, it's automatically attributed to gang violence. Well, Lauren, one of the things that uh, you and your brother write about in the book is that this is a generation that's grown up after Columbine, that you've had red alert drills your entire life, that somehow we've normalized this behavior. I was born after Columbine. I was nine when Sandy Hook happened. I'd grown up waking up every morning, it seems like, and seeing these things on the news. And the thing is, I never realized before this affected me that these aren't things that just happen. These things shouldn't be happening. And that's one of our main issues with this problem is that we've grown accustomed to it as a nation. We are coming on the air at this hour with news of a school shooting in South Florida. This took place. And until it happens to you, you don't think it's real. You don't think it's ever going to happen to you unless you live in some of these communities. But that's the problem. I've grown up, like you said, going through red, red, red code red drills like every other month, and I thought it was normal. It's like I never really thought, I'm sitting in this corner because there's a chance that somebody might come into my school and murder me. 
You know, speaking of sitting in the corner, while you were there in that uh, room with your friends waiting for the all clear sign, one of the quotes that stood out to you and to me was uh, you, you spoke to a woman that said, I even texted my sisters shooting at my school, I am safe. They both responded with, OMG, LOL, you're funny. Yeah. We're to the point in this country where people actually joke about school shootings. That's, it's almost like our coping mechanism in this country because it's dark humor because it happens so often. You know, having one school shooting a week should not be normal. You've had several legislative victories since you guys have started this. You had a march where people all over the world took part. It's part of the national conversation, but how do you keep this momentum going? The sad thing is, even if Lauren and I just completely stopped right now, there's still going to be more mass shootings. There's still going to be people dying every day on American streets because our politicians refuse to take action. They refuse. They want to sit back in their complacency and take money from the NRA. How are you going to measure your success in the long term? Is it about uh, getting people that you want into office in this midterm election? Are you playing a kind of a longer I think arc? getting people into office that are morally just, but I'm not talking Democrats or Republicans here. I'm talking Americans that aren't politicians, but are human beings, for God's sake. The best way for people to understand what it's like to go through these situations or have lose somebody that they know to gun violence is close your eyes and imagine the person that you love most that you hold closest to you and how much you love them. And now imagine that person is murdered and you can't do anything about it. And when you speak to your politicians, they say, I'm sorry, but we can't do anything about it. And then when you speak to people, they don't care because they didn't know them. America needs to learn empathy and put themselves in each other's shoes. When politicians put children and love and happiness over their pocketbooks, I think that's when times are really going to begin to change. I think the saddest part about this book is that at the end you chronicle from Columbine onward so many different school shootings that have happened, but the, the worst part is that Parkland wasn't the last one. Even since then, there have been multiple. So how do you tackle something like that? Obviously, we want to get to an era where that doesn't ever happen. I, I think larger than getting just the right people into office and getting more people to vote, these movements have to be a cultural shift in America where we don't accept these things like gun violence. You know, we don't accept our children dying every day on our streets. In the book, I look at myself long and hard and I'm very honest about my past. I think America has to do the same thing, but about where we are right now to ever fix it. David Hogg, Lauren Hogg, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.